who want travels reimbursement kindly send us a mail or you can just write your names in some paper and give it to us it will take some time to process <coughs> the second thing is that we are planning to revive this idea of this blog writing so those who don't know so every day whatever is covered in these two lectures will need a volunteer to write a brief summary of it not too much equation like what is happening because we'll post it in some probably we'll socialize the workshop so if essentially write a two or three page summary of the entire two sessions and uh, that will go through the speaker i mean if any editing is required and once he or she approves then we'll essentially post it in our workshop page or in some other platform so for 11 days we actually need at least 11 volunteers but it's not like you have to write alone you can talk among yourselves and uh, do it so pavan has already volunteered yesterday's thing we are yet to post it so for today we'll need another person so anyone is interested <coughs> okay sinender will do it and so every day like uh, we'll need one so it's not like you have to write everything it's just a brief summary and you can also discuss with other even the speaker himself and then just give it to us and then we'll do it okay so the first session will be suchetan uh, he is a postdoc at iit kanpur the second session is kind of dynamical depending on uh, how much time i mean uh, so chandramouli will give us a discussion session one hour he will discuss something and then there's a half an hour slot if suchetan needs he can take that others will have the short talk in that thing okay so yeah first i would like to thanks the organizer for now it's fine yeah so first i would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present here talk so <coughs> and <coughs> so uh, so we'll give four lectures and about this algebraic cubic <clears throat> so let me first just uh, describe the plan of today's lectures <clears throat> so plan so first i'll <coughs> give you some motivation about this subject like so why do we need uh, to study this uh, modular algebra and algebraic cubic algebra and <coughs> second and the second time second part i'll introduce the uh, one of this theorem which is called a reisner theorem which was actually introduced or which was mentioned by chandramouli last last time but but that was for i mean <coughs> yeah can you write bigger people about more space take space and oh yeah so So it was briefly mentioned by Chandramouli uh, yesterday, and but it was for his words and their words about uh, in the context of ADS and in the context of holography. But today I speak about in the uh, usual thing of Riesel theorem in the context of QFT, purely in QFT, no gravity input. But huh. so I'll, I'll state this, and I mean this <coughs> statement. 
<coughs> some implication and etc next and the, the next part i'll uh, talk about some local algebras So and here I'll describe some notion of like uh, star algebra, von Neumann algebra, and the plus uh, some causal structure as to it. And then in the uh, next, I will describe the notion of state uh, in this algebraic QT language. And at the if, if uh, then still th I have time, or I don't think that I'll cover everything here. But if still I have time, then I can briefly discuss uh, GNS construction. I mean, a, rep a representation of this algebra instead. This is the, uh, the brief plan of this today's lectures. So, so okay. So let me start then. So, uh, you could talk a little louder, otherwise the recorder is not. Can you please talk a little louder, otherwise the recorder is not. Oh, the uh, height. No, 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 just speak louder. Now. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, first I start with uh, motivation. <coughs> so I'm using this. Right? That's fine. Yeah, I can use this board, but okay. So start with <coughs> some motivation. Oh, sure. Yeah. So you cannot go there. You have to do it here only. Oh, only only this side. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 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 I mean, there are uh, various reasons to study this algebraic QFT. And some <coughs> one, one of the main motivation is like uh, in some application in holography. So, and I'll not discuss this part because this, mostly this part will be discussed. Sorry? What is algebraic What is algebraic QFT? Oh, I'll define that later. But I'm just, uh, why I'll study this, but I'll just give some motivation list for you. So I'm just, some application holography is very useful in this setup, I mean, algebra setup and modular theory. Like, <coughs> so in, uh, in the application of holography, and it, it was mostly discussed by Sitendar and other uh, Tonoy in, <coughs> in the next lecture. In the, and the, it is in the context of uh, entanglement OH reconstruction. So I'll not anything introduce now, but I'll uh, discuss this later. But the holographic motivation is purely discussed by, uh, <coughs> I mean, there's Sitender in the next next week in the bug reconstruction. And there are also other other thing like uh, like uh, uh, interior of black hole. Plus some, and some recent works on, uh, <coughs> 
and some recent work of de describing like uh, emerge emergence of <coughs> of uh, infalling time. And there is many, many thing in this setup, but these are uh, very useful. I mean, uh, this language or the al algebraic QFT things uh, actually has been used in many notions, like uh, some recent work in. Uh, so I will not give any reference now, but um, <coughs> but at least this part will be discussed by Sender in the next uh, in his lecture. So in holography, there are very useful things to study, and it was basically the main tool is the modular flow in this context. And which will be discussed by uh, Devangshu in the next lecture. Hmm. Another motivation is like uh, deriving some bounds. <laughs> so we'll see that this, uh, and, uh, that this modular flow or the, and in, the, in the notion of algebraic QFT, this modular flow actually uh, um, <coughs> uh, gives some bound on the on some QFT states and in some uh, as in some quantity in like modular Hamiltonian and like the monotonicity city of relative entropy and etc. But and using those bounds on these quantities, one can actually derive very useful bounds in QFT and and anything like <coughs> one one is like an and there is also so like yeah, could you repeat what you said about the bounds? Hmm. What what sort of bounds are these? Yeah, bounds means like uh, like uh, I mean uh, in modular theory in modular KFT, you'll you'll see that some objects like uh, modular operator and some okay. relative modular operator. Itself. Okay. And using and and the, those op and those term, I mean those quantities actually follow some bounds in this mod modular theory, and from those bounds actually one can derive some useful bounds in KFT. Like uh, one of these, which is the average null energy condition, which I will discuss in the last lecture. But the proof of ANEC, uh, 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 the proof, and it is followed by some just two or three lines, just just from some modular inclusion. I, I'm not describing anything. I'm just uh, giving some just uh, okay. that what is the useful of usefulness. So it's ANEC in field theory. Yes, ANEC in field theory. I mean any in any QTX. Not QNEC. Huh? No, not QNEC. Yeah, uh, but but uh, one can also derive QNEC from NEC, and there's some. But I'm not. I don't know about the QNEC thing. But I can. Uh, I can. I mean, I can show you the NEC from this. But but yeah, there are some papers that QNEC is also followed from NEC. And one one in, in, in just like Bekenstein bound, which can also be uh, proved by using some uh, bound from modular flow. But these are just like I'm just giving some usefulness of this, uh, starting with this. And the last thing, but so this part I'll discuss in the last lecture. But and, and this part will be given by Sender in the next, uh, next week. And the last part is like that entanglement in QFT. <coughs> so, so and this this is interesting that to understand the entanglement structure in QFT, one need to uh, understand the algebraic algebraic QFT or the modular structure, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So I'll, I'll so today's lecture I will be mainly focusing this term that what is the notion of entanglement in QFT, and the one of the main thing that that this entanglement in QFT is not just a property of state but is also property of algebras in some region. So that is the goal of my lecture, to today's lecture, to understand what is the entanglement structure in QFT. And so it is like, like local QFT. So I'll try to motivate this in my lecture. Okay. <clears throat> so just. <clears throat> So let me start with some just uh, 
uh, just uh, definition of internal entropy. So most of you know this, like, but still I'm uh, going through this, like internal entropy, and. So if uh, if we have a Hilbert space in, uh, and some quantum system in some Hilbert space, and if this Hilbert space can be factorized into two subsystems, like A is the one subsystem and A complement is the rest of the sub uh, rest of the system. If if the Hilbert space can be factorized in two subsystems, then one can actually define some. <coughs> and for this total total Hilbert space, one can define a, a density matrix which is rho. And then <coughs> from this, one can define a notion of reduced density matrix. So this is like rho A, which is just, so most of you know this, like, but I'm just going because um, I think like, and from this, this is the reduced density matrix. From this, one can define the integral entropy of this between A and A complement, which is just defined like this. No, since this rho is actually the it is this rho is actually positive and positive semi-definite operator. So we can actually write this rho as in the following way. Right? Since this is always positive, we can always write it in some exponential, in some in some operator. Okay, so this h is actually it is defined as in this way. So this h is called the modular Hamiltonian. Loud, speak loud. The definition of rho total is like a two point function or something. Hmm? Rho total? Yes. Is it a two point function? Yes. Rho total? Rho total is it a two point function? Two point function. Yeah, the definition of rho total, is it some correlation function like two point function or? Oh, no. I mean, uh, the, I mean the any correlation function is always defined like trace of rho. And we, yeah, or you can, is, also, okay, okay, okay. you can also define like trace of, this is all the same like piece of rho of o. If o is all, only, uh, I mean, if o is. Oh, it's like a part of OK, OK, OK. Sorry. Entity. Okay. Yeah. Then you can always. OK, 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 OK. okay. Hmm. So are you asking this? Or no? So can you so switch it on one second? You have to slide the board slightly to the right, otherwise it will go out of the view. I mean, it's zoomed in, so. Okay. Just slide the board to the right. Complete, that's for, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and fine. try to write a little bigger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this H is actually uh, called the modular Hamiltonian of subsystem A. <coughs> so, or in some, or in other way, this is entanglement entropy is basically So this, uh, so basically, this modular Hamiltonian actually the operator version of integral entropy because you can always write this. Uh, I mean, since this is rho, I mean, O is always trace of rho, and if rho is actually equal to minus h, then then you can always write this uh, h the modular expression value of h is actually the integral entropy in, in, in the straight rho rho a. Okay. So basically, this uh, modular Hamiltonian is the operator version of the integral entropy. Mm. <clears throat> now, uh, it, I'm, what I am saying is it is only in, it is only valid in finite dimension system or the infinite dimension system with some cutoff, okay, with some UV cutoff. And but in QFT, in some huh, in QFT, this H can have uh, it is is generically is is non-local, okay. <clears throat> See, it is important that there's no no reason to uh, there's no uh, reason to, to, to uh, there's one question and there's a question so how do we say that rho a will be positive uh, positive semi definite rho is, is positive uh, like positive semi definite uh, how can we say that sorry this rho a there you said rho a, uh, yeah th that will be positive semi semi definite yeah it? yeah yeah like uh, how can we say that 
Yeah, because uh, Roy is always my, I mean, uh, uh, um, I mean uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, row is always positive, right? Or? OK, uh, I got it. Uh, so Chetan, hmm. why is it called the modular Hamiltonian? No, why is not? It is, it is defined as modular Hamiltonian. No, what, what, is the, what does it mean? Why? Modular means what? No, no, that is some name. I don't know. What, what is the, I mean, the numerology, I don't know. Okay. And what is the? Or it is called like it is described as something, or it is something called the entanglement Hamiltonian. Yeah, actually, uh, maybe because uh, this H A it gives you the modular transformations, right? It's louder. Yeah, actually, mm, it, it generates the modular uh, flow and the modular symmetry, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that is yeah, that is the one thing that uh, yeah. So I mean, there is some quantity like uh, modular operator. I'll I'll describe this later, but. But yeah, it has some. It might have some uh, history reason to call it modular Hamiltonian. But but this dimensionless, at right? At that time, I don't know. But it does not have any dimension of energy or anything, right? So, huh? It's dimensionless, right? I mean, this modular Hamiltonian. Yeah, I mean, why you call it Hamiltonian? That's it's just. Oh, in no, no, it's no, it is just name. It is just name. I mean, uh, yeah. But <coughs> how can I mean? Uh, like. Uh, like for thermal density matrix, you can always write like. Rho. No, but there is a beta h. So yeah, beta is one. Like this, I mean, it, if for I mean for thermal case, this Hamiltonian is actually modular Hamiltonian is basically the uh, uh, thermal Hamiltonian, where with beta equal to one, right? Oh, you are working for beta equal to one. Or no, so. no, I, that was for thermal case, but it was it was for any reduced density matrix. But I, if you if you consider just thermal density matrix, no, no, that's fine. I'm asking your H A is dimension full or dimensionless? No, at this stage it is dimensionless, of course. Okay, that's what I'm okay, thing. Hmm. So, uh, just to clarify, in, in certain cases, H A does reduce to your Hamiltonian. Like if you're doing the render case, for example, then your H A would reduce to the render time transitions, the one which generates time transitions for the render. But at this point, it is like, it is yeah, at this point I mean, from this definition, it is of dimension. So OK, so in QFT, uh, in many cases, in, I mean, it is generically, this, uh, this modular Hamilton is actually a non-local operator. It is, there is no reason to expect that it, is, it should be local. But there exists some, I mean, some special symmetric case for which we can have a local expression of uh, modular Hamiltonian. Could you explain what is local and non-local? Yeah, so local local means that that uh, this uh, this modular. Okay, so I, I'm just uh, I'm just giving one one uh, example. Like like if you consider the Rindler case, what Shandamu is saying that for Rindler case, I mean if you consider this <coughs> this is the a yeah, suppose this is your a and this uh, only the right side is the uh, is your uh, subsystem. And for this system, if you consider, if you uh, if you write the expression of H A, and that is just basically <coughs> at at some constant time slice t equal to zero, for any suppose d minus two x dimension, <coughs> so this is the local. I mean, so the local means that. Uh, this this modular Hamiltonian is actually can be expressed in terms of local field in this region. Some in, but it is integrated object, but it is still expressed in some in terms of local fields. But generically, it, you you cannot find such expression for for a generic modular. Field. Like if you if you consider any any arbitrary system in a QFT for this I mean any arbitrary region in this QFT for that for that system you, you don't have some simple expression like this. So only for some symmetric case or some Special case, you have some local expression for this border Hamiltonian, as we know. Okay, so I'll we'll derive this uh, later because uh, using from purely from algebraic QFT point of view. So over there, your A is like a positive real line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is x one, and of course, x one greater than sorry. The example that you did, which was just a, a small interval, 
Sorry. you are saying that it would be not wrong. Yes, yes. <coughs> it's a full hash, yes. So one is like uh, Rindler. Another is like, uh, you can consider any safety, any safety div vacuum. Oh, sorry, Rindler, it is in vacuum state, okay. Uh, sorry, vacuum, no, I'm saying, sorry, Rindler. Uh -huh. In uh, relay in any QFT uh, plus vacuum. So if you consider any QFT in the right wedge and the vacuum, if you consider the, vac the model hamlet for the vacuum state, then you will get this expression. It is, for, it is true for any QFT in the relay space. It's not any for any uh, particular QFT or something. But it is only true for vacuum state. So using some conformal transformation, one can also one can also see that if you consider the d-dimensional CFT in vacuum, in, in hello Suchetan, yeah. please write bigger. Otherwise, it will be difficult to like see okay. in the recording. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it is, uh, yeah, um, the for gauge theory, I don't know. I mean, uh, it is only, I, um, no, I don't know about gauge theory. Yeah, there, is, there might be problems with gauge theory, but. Which thing? Because you're saying I also don't think that uh, it, 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 it has any, uh, to construct this model Hamilton, you, you need to have any input from the, I mean, the QFT Hamiltonian or something. I mean, it should valid for anything because it, it, is, it is purely derived algebraically or using some symmetries, in a space and symmetries. So it does not have any dynamical input of what you do. So I think it is true for anything. <coughs> Yeah, so, and another example is like spherical, uh, spherical. Uh, Shujatan, yeah, so this H, uh, this X, X1 is the dummy variable, right? I don't see in the H. I mean, X1 is the dummy. Yeah, 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 it does, it, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's also an integration of dx1. Yes, there is also, sorry, I'm, I'm Yeah, it has in d dimension all the, I mean, uh, so uh, I mean only if you consider that this is the x1 and this is all the x d minus 2 and uh, sorry, this is t and all this direction is like x d minus 2. I mean, all the all the null direction. Okay, so you're integrating over x1 and? And dx minus 2. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it is only and some t equal to 0 slide. On a, on a constant time slice? I can see it, but probably nobody else can. You have to write bigger, otherwise. OK, OK, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just erase this. And so OK, so I'm just uh, stating this. And I'll so some spherical region in CFTD. 
vacuum. <coughs> and for this case also, we have an, uh, I mean, a local expression for modular Hamiltonian. And there is also other case like uh, in 2D safety, all the locally excited state has some uh, local local expression of modular Hamiltonian. But these all are related by uh, symmetry, symmetry property of this state. These d minus 2 coordinates taking up written down, are these, uh, why are you saying these are null coordinates? I mean, like, uh, so that, have you drawn that uh, line No, I mean, this x d minus 2 is all the, all the I mean, uh, orthogonal coordinate. I mean, not. This is x1, this is t. Uh, are they null or they are not null? Null. Yeah. Now, is it something wrong? No, no, no. It is, it is just, I'm, I'm just writing like as it is square. I'm not writing in the in null code. So now, what I will try to see, uh, I will try to argue that <coughs> this entanglement entropy in QFT, this is purely UV divergent quantity. Okay, and this and this the source of this UV divergence actually comes from that, and and this UV divergence. It is a short, uh, short, I mean, <coughs> uh, short distance divergence, and it, it actually appears at the near boundary, delta A. Okay. So suppose you have a, some region A, and this A complement. So all this divergence actually comes from ne near this, near this side. Okay. So I'll try, I'll try to have a heuristic picture why this, uh, why this entire metropy is UV divergent. Okay. I'll try to give some heuristic picture. But, uh, <coughs> so suppose you, suppose you have considered an <coughs> vacuum in a, in any QFT. Okay. So we will we'll always have some uh, uh, fra vacuum fluctuation. Like there's always some virtual pair creation, right? I mean, some electron positron pair, electron positron pair in everywhere in vacuum, right? Now suppose you consider the <coughs> pair virtual pair creation at near the boundary. Okay. So there is, I mean, so this e plus e minus. In, at every point, there is there will be some virtual pair creation, right? But now, suppose you consider at particular time slice, like this. Suppose you consider like, I should not. Mm, so. Far. So some consider t equal to zero slice. Okay. So at that time slice. We'll, we'll have that uh, one particle which is inside this A and one part and the other antiparticle which is outside this A region. Okay. And so, uh, if you con if you ca calculate the entanglement entropy, so one contribution of course comes from this this near uh, near boundary region, which is this E plus is integral with E minus, right? Now, if you if we consider the constant time slice, and and every point there will be pair creation, right? In in vacuum, and if you if you calculate all this internal entropy of all this uh, e plus e minus at every point near the boundary, okay, then then if you add all this, then it will give an infinite factor, because because the fact that this is a continuum picture, this is not a lattice picture, right? If you if we if we have lattice picture, then it is an it is countable. This this is not infinite, but this, since this is a continuum. We can we don't we don't get an a finite answer. So so my point is that that in continuum KFT integral entropy is always UV divergent. Okay. Sorry, uh, why you call it UV? Oh yeah, UV means it is short distance divergent, and it only comes from it only comes from this 
delta i i mean this uh, near boundary region now i can also say like if i shrink the region a to zero size then it diverges then you can i mean that is also a notion of uv divergence right no uh, then there is no i mean there is if a goes to zero then there is only one one i mean there is no sub region right there is pure state i mean there is then you ha you don't have any a or a complete you 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 must have some region a which is which is not zero it's some some region right i mean you can't shrink it to zero then there is there is no point to calculate the entire entropy what is the behavior as i try to shrink the region to yeah it is still there but if you but i mean if you shrink it it, it, it has some this region right but still there is infinite divergence because it only comes from the near near boundary region only comes from this 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 region I can't hear. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you were saying that uh, you have this uh, pair, pair creation along the boundary, yeah. and then uh, the boundary is a continuum, and therefore you have this u infinite yeah, UV yeah. division. But, but the boundary is always compact, right? I mean, any anything I have on a compact surface, why should it diverge? Like if I have a QFT in a box, it's a continuum yeah. still. Um, uh, uh, but uh, um, I mean, if as long as it's compact, why should it diverge? That's that's what I'm not. No, I don't think it is. It comes from the compactness, right? Because uh, well, it comes from the fact that uh, it is continuum. Right? Because at every point there is, I mean, uh, pair creation, and every point there is some uh, contribution to entanglement entropy because because of some outgoing and ingoing pair, right. uh, ingoing particle, and that every if you sum all these points, all this inter all the uh, contribution of this entanglement entropy, then it is infinite. Because because the point that this, uh, I mean. Uh, this, uh, I mean, this region is continuous. I mean, this is continuous. This, I, mean, no, I mean, by that logic, if I take any integral on any um, uh, 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 compact line segment, like zero to one open interval, yeah, yeah. that seems like it's just, it's it, it can diverge. But isn't it true that you can in any compact thing you can as long as the function is well behaved, you can you will never diverge. Sorry, can you repeat again? I mean, uh, Yeah. What? What interpretation? So yeah. Particular computation. Particular integral in mind. Diagram of this like one big diagram. Then you can just see like. No, no. I don't. So you can diagram like that. No, no. So what I'm not able to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the point is when he is dividing this uh, region into a. A complement and the entanglement surface del A. So now, as he said, that gave the physical physical picture that some uh, of the particles are inside and their antiparticles are outside. So now, when you are taking the trace, so you are essentially trace, taking a trace over uh, AC, right? Mm -hmm. So, so to begin with, the whole uh, density state rho rho total is a pure state. If you calculate the entropy, it will be zero. But when you take the trace. And you are restricting to the region A, so it will be uh, not a pure state, and its uh, entanglement entropy will be something finite. Now there are uh, now imagine that at the background, I mean in back of your mind, you have a lattice uh, thing with lattice lattice separation epsilon. So if you draw a boundary there, so some of the pieces are inside and some are the outside. So now there are infinitely. Uh, I mean, so if you, so long as you have finite number of uh, lattice points, you can. I mean, if you calculate the uh, entropy there, you will find that it, its contribution is one over epsilon, where epsilon, epsilon raised to some power, where epsilon is a lattice spacing. So now, when you go to the quant continuum limit, you take epsilon going to zero, and that is where uh, this mm -hmm. divergence is coming from. And it will not matter. Like, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's all. So, uh, so, so, so I understand the computation. I'm not saying it's not UV divergent. I understand if this argument that it may be UV divergent. But what I don't understand is that this pair creation argument, right? If each so if I, if each of if so each of this is contributing some entropy and none of them individually diverge, if I add them as long as this boundary is compact, I cannot imagine it ever becoming divergent. This are, that is the only. No, I mean this is exactly what it is. No, I mean yeah. Now, suppose if you are in a lattice, what are the parameters? What will be your answer to this? 
you will have your subsystem size a is there a prime is there another quantity that you have in your theory is the cutoff right right and this will generically appear in the form of size of subsystem by cutoff you are taking that cutoff to zero this is a very qft specific statement if you compute the same thing in quantum mechanics exactly as sitendra said if you have this lattice system it will be finite no what i'm saying is yeah anish ha i'm yeah, yeah it's like adding point whatever small number and multiplied by infinite so no, there no, will be infinite uh, such uh, things here yeah. i'm saying that individually it may diverge it may happen that at at any individual i don't think that it, it everything is finite at each location and then the sum of them should be infinite yeah, that yeah. is so when you are something. calculating the entropy yeah you're not integrating over infinite it's a finite boundary right no but but number yeah the point is that it is continuous yeah, it, it has infinite number of points so every point it has a finite quantity then it is infinite that is the point i mean you have divided your system into blocks of size l by a l is supposed to be characteristic length scale l by a a is the part a is the is the unit part of the lattice size so something of size l by a also something of size l by a so this ratio has to be here it is in your answer no i am saying that if you consider a line any line yeah right even then there are infinite number of points in your Yeah, Avik. Avik, Avik. Can we uh, can we, we can postpone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So let him continue. Yeah. Yeah. But that is purely heuristic picture. I'm just trying to say that this divergence actually coming from the near boundary thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what I think should happen. Yeah. I don't think it's because of the. because it's no, a because compact boundary the region right? shape of the region i mean i'm what i'm trying to say that is because of this continuum picture I mean, this the continuum i mean that the contribution is okay. infinite and the number of point is infinite later later and yeah sure later so yeah but that is heuristic picture I mean, there is that is nothing from here if you calculate everything i mean in some qft we see, always see that for in sake that there is some cut off we cut off and in that is picture and if you go that cut off goes to zero that is due divergence but heuristically this actually comes that it is it purely comes due to the i mean the near boundary region this divergence the source of this divergence or in other words that this <coughs> that this uh, this this is this entanglement of is in uv, uh, uv divergent in other words it it also means that that uh, we have something wrong in the notion of uh, i mean the factorization of h is h complete so in so the point is that in in continuum qft we can't factorize a hilbert space into a region and and a sub and a sub region into some complement of the sub region so you can argue in this way like and because like uh, you can also see that this since this h is basically this h a rho a and and because h is infinite so and okay i mean okay so i'll i'll come this later but Uh, but but uh, one one evidence like if if we can factorize this h into this uh, a and a complement, then uh, in in the Witten's node he actually argued in, in in this way that if if uh, if it actually factorizes, then there could be some state which is actually uh, I mean a uh, a product state, right? There could be some state like some psi a cross psi b, psi a complement, like. but but for that case we we, we can we can we know that s s is zero if we have a product state we know that s is zero but as we as we argued that in qft s is always ev divergent <coughs> okay so s cannot be zero so we can't have such product state and and no that no existence of such product state means that you can't uh, factorize this hilbert space into a a and a complement okay that's one just evidence just that in qft also an, another thing is that just just to uh, just to go to say that in any any excited state in any excited state in qft if you consider the uh, short dist uh, if you consider the very short distance it is approximately a vacuum state right any state can be approximately a vacuum state in very short distance and so since in vacuum i will argue that uh, since at the vacuum this s is infinite so at any state any excited state this infinity is there so for any state is uv divergent in qft 
and th this UV diffusion is also the same divergence which is the vacuum. Sorry, if you can't. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? If you can't yeah. factorize, how are you defining uh, ACE? No, so we can't define this. That is the point. That is the point I want to argue that in QFT, you can't define integral momentum. Integral momentum is uh, ill defined. Because you know that uh, integral momentum is always UV divergent. A UV divergent quantity you cannot define, right? So that is the point that uh, the integral momentum is, is ill defined quantity in, uh, inter in uh, QFT, continuum QFT. So uh, all the literature you have defined integral momentum is purely in the lattice picture. So lattice picture is not a continuum QFT. And there is a lattice cutoff like epsilon and etc. And then you can define integral entropy like like uh, for like uh, two in two D CFT. You know that uh, the integral momentum in vacuum is basically c by three log uh, x two minus x one by epsilon for this. So so this epsilon is actually the UV cutoff and 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 it is it is computed using the lattice picture by taking the epsilon to be an, uh, a natural cutoff in the lattice, which is the lattice spacing basically. So without using any lattice picture, you cannot define this entanglement of in QFT. Yeah, I was excited. so in that picture, I mean this heuristic picture. Can we understand this log thing? I mean, is divergent? Log, no, no, but that how is not it? understood in this. Yeah, that is right. For in because in, in this is a point, right? In two D, this is just a point. So you can't have this picture, right? In this. So uh, also, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, that is true for uh, in ideal of picture, right? In higher dimension, it, there is the uh, intermediate with some area divergence. Plus. Minus two plus. Okay, area of this. But but that is true in greater than equal to two dimension. But if you consider the two dimension purely, that is log divergence. That, that that does not come from this heuristic. Yeah, that is true. That is a very heuristic picture. I mean, that is not a. No, no. I mean, in this just this formula. I mean, can we understand this? Uh, the no, no, so no. the divergence is like a log of one over no. epsilon, right? It's no. So can we understand that from that picture? That's what. No, because yeah, but it is not an area, right? Because in two D, the area should be just a point, but but it, it is like log of length of this. So it is not an it is not an area also in two D. Another question is: uh, Suppose I am computing from holography yeah. RT, okay. So this this epsilon will be like this where I place my UV cutoff, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so suppose I'm computing. So you're saying that I mean Z cut going to zero is like the Q continuum limit or something? What? I mean suppose I'm doing it. Epsilon holo goes to zero. Yeah. I mean this epsilon will be like the Z cut. I mean this yes, boundary, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. So hmm. Z cut going to zero is saying like the com continuum limit yeah, of. You can say that. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, hmm. but yeah. But that is also any geodesic distance is infinite by definition. You have to, yeah, as you said, that you have to regulate it at some cutoff. But yeah, but if you don't regulate it, then it is always infinite. You don't have any. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Okay, uh, and now what I'm saying, uh, I was saying that since is in, uh, integral entropy is basically the expectation value of modular Hamiltonian, and since integral entropy is ill-defined quantity, so also the modular Hamiltonian itself is also no, is is also ill-defined. I mean, it is not a smooth operator, and the operator this, the non-smoothness coming due to this. I mean, the this um, near near boundary effect. But what what is actually defined a well defined quantity, or that is like one can consider another quantity which is H k, which is just H a minus H a complement, and for this quantity you can see that there's uh, for I mean uh, for Rilder case this is basically just. <coughs> And this for x1, I mean, a full x1, I mean, this minus infinity. Uh, previously, it was x1 greater than 0, but for this k, I mean, for this uh, full modular Hamiltonian, it is called full modular Hamiltonian. This is an well defined quantity, and this is smooth operator. Okay. 
and another thing is like uh, a relative entropy, which is just like when a stress. That is also an uh, well defined quantity in uh, in QFT. Is you will find it. It's not every reversible quantity. Sorry? No, I'm saying ill defined in the sense that since uh, it, the expression value of this is integral entropy, this uh, the is integral entropy is basically the expression value of H, and it is it is ill defined. I mean, it is EV divergent. So that means that it is not an well defined quantity. But as mm -hmm. long as you are considering only the subregion, H should make sense, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm saying that uh, not. I mean that the. Exp I mean wh the some some quantities some operator is not ill-defined means that the expression value is every divergent, right? Or there is some divergence in the expression value of some operator. Yeah, I mean th this comes because the uh, internal of this every divergent quantity. Because for any state it's infinite. Yeah. This expectation value. So. So that's that's why H is every ill-defined quantity. But this this is not an uh, ill-defined. So how does the divergence cancel? Right? Yeah, how does the divergence cancel? Yeah, I mean the, the, it, again the heuristically this cancel because the uh, if you uh, I mean since uh, I mean I mean I mean uh, if you uh, what I'm saying I mean uh, <coughs> because this uh, H the divergence comes purely from the boundary boundary effect I mean the boundary quantity boundary boundary point. So H A and minus H A complement that boundary boundary is cancelled, right? The boundary terms cancel. And so there is something finite. Because this as I said that this this is the X one in full range. So there is no I mean previously it was X one for H it was X one greater than zero. So there is I mean some king at the X one, right? But when I'm saying this uh, case X one is for for any X one, then there is no king at this. It was integrated over all the ratio. So it is an old different quantity. And another is relative entropy, which is also different. The point is that we'll, we'll, we want to argue that in, in the algebraic PFT setup, in algebraic PFT, this K or this S relative entropy is can be rigorously defined without using any notion of uh, can be defined. So this means we don't we don't assume H uh, I mean the Hilbert is factorized into H into H complement and and if we don't assume this and th in a we'll see that which I mean the will be <coughs> uh, will be saying something like in there is some mo some modular algebra that is that this K or this H relative can be defined rigorously or more mathematically in the algebraic point of view and that was an well defined quantity okay so Peter, yeah. So this uh, H minus HA complement, basically this is just subtracting out all the exactly. uh, problematic terms at the bottom. Exactly, exactly. So it's like, okay, subtracting sort of like a, uh, this zero-point energy that people Yeah, you can say like this, but yeah, but, uh, but there's not a Hamiltonian, of course, because, I mean, that was, um, it's Hamiltonian for some symmetry, like for real life case, that is, you can relate it to Hamiltonian, ah, okay. but, but. But in general, this is not a Hamiltonian. This had something like, I mean, non-local non quantity. So, but still, the divergence comes because of from this, uh, it, it will cancel. But yeah. But the, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not saying the uh, k complement is. Uh, I mean the expression value of k is something. But yeah, yeah. Let's assume a, a doesn't appear. no, but a minus a the but uh, the u b divergence actually comes from the this uh, near boundary part. 
So this will cancel. I mean, yes, so, minutes. No, but, but No, but I mean, you say it's not equal to SA complement, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. in a, if it is. <coughs> for pure state, but this, but for any state, you can don't have. I mean, but that is, uh, yeah. But I'm not saying that, uh, yeah. I'm saying that this K is actually, I mean, not ubidavance quantity. I'm not saying that the, the expression value is K is something which is, which is, which I want to uh, compute. That's not. But I'm just saying that this K is useful quantity which you can study in the language of modular flow and something. Yeah. I will not, we'll not study H, the modular flow, I mean, some flow of this HA. Eh? Rather, we'll study the modular flow of K, which we'll uh, discuss, it, I mean, by the function. <laughs> because K is well-defined uh, quantity. Yeah. It is an operator. Uh, that's, that's the point. Uh. Mm. OK, so. Yeah, rho is a two state. I mean, the di I mean, it is relative entropy. It is some definition like, if I have two state rho and sigma, oh. two density matrices. I mean, rho and sigma, then that is this like rho log rho minus rho log sigma. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but but it is it also defined in purely in terms of algebraic cube. Well, that was that was all defined by Levinson. Uh, I'm just saying that the motivation is like that to find some finite quantity in QFT in that to measure the entanglement. We we don't we don't need to assume that. Uh, I mean, Hilo's phase is factorized. Yeah, then we can have some uh, other notion of like mo modular theory and et cetera, where we can define some if we finite quantity. And that is, that is one of the motivation to study algebraic QFT. Now the main point, which I in this in this lecture I want to argue, that is that <coughs> the entanglement in QFT is not just a property of state, but is also property of <coughs> This point I want to make this in this lecture. That is the main point that I want to. That in QFT, this entanglement is not just come from the property of the state, but it is the property of algebra. Also. <coughs> so, this actually, this notion actually comes from the uh, and very beautiful theorem, which is the recent theorem. So it was uh, some. It was mentioned by Chandramouli uh, yesterday, but uh, but it was in the defined context on holographic something. Or in but now I'm purely in, I'm <coughs> I want to discuss in the QFT point of view. What is the meaning of this theorem? Recent theorem. So what it tells actually that in QFT any <coughs> the in, if you consider the operators or fields in some region, that this that the okay then let me write that field.
So it tells something that like uh, field variables in one region, in any, any, any region in the QFT, is actually integrated with the field variables in the other region in the QFT. So I'll, but before that, I'm, or more precisely, I mean, or more precisely, this means that if you consider the bounded operators, I'll define this uh, everything, but just let me write. So this is the statement. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm to explain this everything that if you consider the bounded operators, I will define what is bounded operators. But if you consider all the bounded operators, but which is restricted to an arbitrary open set in the space time, I'll, I'll define that. Suppose you have the this is the full space time. Okay. But if you if you have operators which is an which is restricted to an arbitrary open set, like if you consider the all the operators in this region. Okay. All the operators in this region. But the point is that these, all the operators in this region actually uh, generate all, all the state in the, in the vacuum sector of the Hilbert space. Okay, I will define what is vacuum sector, I will define what is bounded operator, and what is the meaning of this. But that is very counterintuitive statement, that if you consider any, any region, the, 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 I mean, this, even this region, that is very small region, arbitrarily small region, and all the bounded operators in, this, in, that, board, in that region, then it is sufficient to uh, if you uh, it is uh, and I mean I'll explain this later, but it is sufficient to I mean uh, <coughs> construct the algebra of these operators to construct the full vacuum sector. I mean all all the other state in this Hilbert space in the vacuum 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 sector of Hilbert space. Okay, so before that I'm I'm giving an example to understand what is going on because. <coughs> uh, Suchetan, we have yeah. questions. Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah. So, uh, can can you please, I mean, sl uh, slide in that to the left. Okay. So, uh, that manifold picture that you have just drawn, you say, I mean, uh, all the bounded operators restricted to the arbitrary open set. Yeah. So, that manifold is that manifold an open manifold? Say, I mean, or, or is it some compact, some bounded manifold? I mean, like, because in that case, can I, uh, you know, no, this this just a full full Minkowski vacuum. I'm full Minkowski space. So it's an open manifold, right? Open manifold, yeah. Okay, all right. But you can you can consider it in an open set. I mean so open set I have to consider an open set inside this uh, manifold, yeah. and and that manifold does not have any restriction that and, I mean I mean it can be say open or close or something no, like no, this, no, right? No, no, no. It is not. It, it is not it. Hello, Sujatan. I have a very foolish question here. So uh, actually, what's the difference between like uh, state operator correspondence in CFT than no, these yeah, things? No, yeah, that, that is one. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, one example is like CFT instead of, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, but that was like in CFT, you have that any local operator is is d described by I mean state, right? So in CFT, like any local operator at, at some point. Yes, yes. Yeah, any local operator is actually described as state. We can do it in CFT because we have dilatation symmetry yeah, exactly. there. That is but the, that here, what's the thing? In CFT, we have the, uh, the dilatation symmetry is there. Or the scaling symmetry. Yes, yes. Using that, you can have this. Construct but the states. But this is true for any QFT. Not an, you, don't have, you don't need this dilatation symmetry or something. So you in some sense, this is the generalization of this uh, or state operator correspondence of CFT. You can say like this, yeah. But that is true for only only one local operator, just on only one point. But, the, uh, but, right. but it is true for, I mean, any any sub any local region in the space time. I mean, I mean, say that this this could be arbitrarily small after a point, or this could be in some region like this, some open region like this. No, and uh, okay. So any operator in this region will end up. So any local, non-local so doesn't matter. Local is, yeah, bounded operators. I'm saying all the bounded operators. The bounded operator. I'll define this. Yes, yes. 
So yeah, so bounded operators mean basically just if you O is the operator, operator, then then this basically O driver. And is there any quant quantization procedure you are following for this theorem or anything? Huh? Like in CFT, we know the two state operator correspondence. We need radial quantization. Yes, okay. uh, Here we are following any type of quantization no, or no, anything. No, no, no. This, this is just usual quantization. I mean, I'm not following any quantization or something. Any just yeah, usual canonical quantization. Yeah. Any any kind of quantization. This this does not need any radial quantization. Yeah, that was because of the radial quantization. You can yes, we can do it. Some, yeah, yes, the path integral description. You can hmm. Sink any operator to a point. Point then yeah okay. yes. No, here we don't need this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hi hi, so Chetan. Uh, can you like clarify a bit more on the first statement that you made? Like hmm? very feel it. First statement. Can you say more about that? Yeah, I'll I'll describe it briefly. I'm just okay. stating what is the I mean the counterintuitive statement. That okay, okay. Yeah, I'll describe this. I guess yeah. I think uh, these two notions. Anirban, this is regarding your question. So so. Uh, yeah, so so the point is that state operator correspondence is an isomorphism between states and operators. Okay, here what he is telling is that in order to uh, generate uh, uh, any uh, state of your Hilbert space, you require some data. Where does that data lie on? Like for example, if you want to uh, get some uh, state in your uh, Hilbert space, what you do is you act with creation operators on the vacuum, right? Now, where are these creation operators residing? Like in a field theory, you will have uh, there is a field, right? It is uh, spread over all of the space time, which means at each point you have some creation and annihilation operators, right? Yeah. So now what he is telling in this particular statement is that uh, the operators, which are bounded operators, which are localized in as small as open uh, region in the, let's say, Minkowski space time that you have. So those operators are sufficient to generate all states in the Hilbert space. For example, if you want to generate a state where there is uh, an electron on the moon, it is sufficient, uh, the information for generating that is locally present here, let's say on in this room. You can perform uh, excitations here, which will create uh, the thing there. So that's what it is saying. So these two are, uh, I mean, somewhat different. Somewhat, but that is true mm -hmm. for even CFT, right? If you if you consider any local operator at that point, you you can even consider. Yeah, yeah so Riesz Schneider theorem is true for any QFT, and yeah. CFT is a particular subset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for CFT, it is clear that it is true. I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that is using just uh, for the direction symmetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So state of is it, I mean, you give a map, given this state, what is the operator it corresponds to, and vice versa. And so yeah. Yeah, I mean, saying that's of CFT. If you consider a local operator, like some some f primary operator, and if you consider all the full, full the, if you co consider the full Verma module, like acting on on I mean descendants and all things, then that is just the same thing like uh, this. I mean, for the vacuum sector, this like if you can consider a Verma module of yeah. this is purely as a vacuum sector, uh, just yeah. the descendant theorem in the vacuum sector. It's Yeah, but that is also true in CFT that any 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 state in the Verma module you can construct from a local operator. Yeah, hmm. Also, uh, let me give an example. So let's consider a finite dimension system. Okay. So th there is an uh, example. I'm there's some, some analog in finite dimension system. Okay. 
so where you have actually a factorization of Hilbert space okay in fire division system so let's send an uh, entangled state like a bell, bell state basically <coughs> So that's a bell state, internal state. So in, in the basis, uh, in the matrix basis, I'm just writing this 0 as 1, 0. OK. So you can see that this 0, A cross is basically. And <coughs> so basically, psi is the okay. So you just construct a uh, state psi and in this basis, this. <coughs> Now suppose we construct an operator A, which is which belongs to I mean, uh, H, and we, we we choose an operator from the purely on the H, the helices of A, okay, which is localized in the H, H, H. is defined like this A one one two A two one. So now if we just a acting on zero is basically, or you can write this a one one. Uh, similarly, a acting on one, so keep. Okay. Now, if we con if you act this. On the full state side, on the state side, then you can see that this actually gives that. So what I do is that uh, I just write the state psi in this basis, and and to, I choose an operator A which uh, belongs to this A J Hilbert space, and then I uh, act this operator on the full uh, full state psi. Okay, and and then I get that this gives this expression. Now the point is that if I choose A in such a way that we can generate any state in the full Hilbert space from using this action, that is true, right? You can, you can, you can. I mean, you can uh, construct any state in the full Hilbert space H by using, by, cho by choosing a one one, a one two, a two one, a two two by your in your. Okay. So and so this is just an analog of Rishinder theorem in finite division quantum system that you don't need to con uh, construct and I mean you just need to <coughs> choose an operator A. Which belongs to only one one side of the Hilbert space, and we can generate all the states in the full Hilbert space by choosing this A. But this is true when psi is entangled. That is an important important thing. That when psi is, is entangled state, then you can do this. But if you if psi is not an entangled state, like psi if psi is suppose uh, zero times zero, like some product state, then you can't do this. I mean, if you act this, this is not a full state. You, you can't. I mean, acting a on side on this side, you don't get any st any state of the full Hilbert space. So this is only true for the entangled state. This entangled. Okay. 
So this is an <coughs> important implication that in, fi in finite dimensional quantum system, you can clearly see that <coughs> that by choosing any operator in the in the subregion in the sub Hilbert space, you can construct all the all the states in the full Hilbert space. For KFT, you had vacuum psi, right? Hmm? For KFT, you had psi uh, as the vacuum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm now going for. But for 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 QFT, you don't have this notion. Yeah. In QFT, you don't you don't use this, and you, you also have that it is true for vacuum. But also it is true for other state. But for Riesslinder, it is true. It is I mean the. I'll show that for vacuum it is true. That for vacuum state is this means that vacuum state is entangled. Okay, yeah, that that's not vacuum state is entangled system. everywhere, uh, which I'll prove now. But okay, but this is a quantum finite dimensional system. I mean analog. Oh, How one question. Have, one question. So uh, when you write eight inside H a complement, you mean any uh, operator of the a complement family? Uh, a tensor. No, one one. Sorry, this this identity. Sorry. sorry. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I'm saying that a, okay. any, I, I mean only a operator acting on this, and the identity means that is. And same goes for uh, operators in the H A complement means. Hmm? If same goes for means the same statement is true if you take. For a complement. A yes, complement also. Uh, does it have to be maximally entangled state or no, any, no, no. any entangled state? state is any entangled state. But it does. It, it is not true for any product state. For any, you can check. You can check easily that for any product state, you can't have such basis. Like you can consider any state like this. That's true. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now I'll come to this theorem. How much time? How much time? Do you have? So before going to the main statement, I'll just uh, so what is the setup? So we have a QFT in suppose in uh, D dimension. Sorry, sorry, can't. Uh. Which state? Sorry, can't. Please repeat. You know. I mean, this state, which state? Um, localized. I'm using reach leader, right? Is that also a localized state in some sense? Sorry, I'm. Uh, say I have a re so small region A, and then like I act, uh, do some reach leader stuff and create some state in A complement. Is okay. that also localized to A complement in some sense, or? That is also. Localized. localized. In a complement, or is that a uh, local state in some any sense? Like I'm just trying to score this with a some. Local state means I don't State is not local, right? So I'm just trying to score this with what you learn in some standard renormalization or something, right? If you're s sitting in a small enough region, you would think you're acting with some UV operators, okay? And you wouldn't think you are creating an IR state, like some state which will show up, show up in IR or something. That's like the whole thing we learn about renormalization or something, right? Oh no, no, I don't think that is. Why this IR state? I mean. Like if I have a, say like I want to create a really low energy state somewhere. Okay. This seems to be telling, seems to be telling that you can sit in a really small region. Okay. Do you s like act with only very high energy operators? Hence, hmm. I'm assuming like that's what it yeah, but is. Uh, but but that then all the bounded operators, right? I mean. Uh, say again. Yeah. So you're acting with some high en high energy bounded operator yeah. and creating an IR state. Does doesn't it like sound off with 
this renormalization kind of thingy like Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know perfect question, but yeah, but uh, I mean that state is also in the vacuum sector of the Fourier reverse, right? I mean, no, no. If you're sitting in a finite small region, wouldn't you assume you're all only having operators? Uh, you wouldn't. Okay, you're saying that would include low energy operators. That's okay. That's okay. But like, yeah, uh, in a bounded region, right? Say, in, say, in, say, in a free theory, free QFT. Like, if you're like, if you have access only to like some millimeter worth of region, you wouldn't be like, will, from millimeter worth of region, you can't like create a wave of like really long wavelength, right? again like This example is very, I mean, yeah, it's not uh, uh, Hermitian or anything like that, right? No, that's yeah. but also that's the thing. Uh, may, may, can I just ask? So, just to understand the jargon a little bit, that so usually when you discuss the Riesz Leader theorem and other things, you have this algebra of observables and the, mm. you have something, some notion of a local observ local mm. uh, observable or an operator. Uh, but uh, when it comes to state, is there a notion of localized state? Is there even some definition of uh, what is a localized state? I mean, intuitively, I can think of some wake packet or something like that. But in the way that the entire thing is formulated, is there at all some notion of a oh, localized yeah. state? Mm. No, state in the in the algebraic in the algebraic QFT language, the state is not not defined in, the, in this way. Right? There is I nothing mean, called yeah, like a that is like some map, linear map from algebra observable to some complex number. But so that was defined. I mean, no. His question is like, what is the definition of state? Localized is there in localized state? I mean, in AQFT, right? huh? Right, that's right. So, AQFT. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, yeah. Oh, one question. So, if uh, there is no restriction on these elements like a11, a12, then it seems like suppose you pick uh, the matrix 1111, hmm. then this will give you product state also, right? This thing. Uh, yeah, you can you can construct any state. This not it, it could be product state. It could be any state. But you said that product states cannot be. But pr using this side to be product state, you ca you can't have any state. Any other state. Oh, okay. That okay. is the point. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I see, I see. You you could have product state, of course. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I see. Sorry, sorry. Now I will state the, I'll say the uh, statement of the Riesz-Linear theorem, but you know that I'll just say, what is the setup that we consider any QFT in D dimension, and though it is in Minkowski space time, and this uh, it is just denoted by this x mu, <coughs> and we co we have a vacuum state which is omega, okay, so it means that it is Poincaré invariant. I mean this is uh, any Lorentzian QFT, so I mean <coughs> any uh, I mean this h acting on omega. Is equal to zero. Okay, so it is it is Poincaré invariant vacuum, and now what is H not? H not is basically the vac H not is called the vacuum sector. That is not the full Hilbert space, but there is a vacuum sector of the Hilbert space, which means that this uh, this this vacuum sector of uh, Hilbert space. So 
this means that uh, this uh, this is created by <coughs> acting all the local operators on on vacuum i mean any phi phi dot if you consider all the local operators and and <coughs> and i mean that act on the vacuum you can get all the states which which lie in the vacuum sector of the hilbert space so vacuum sector is basically constructed out of the all the local operators acting on the vacuum okay all the states hmm. now hmm. we'll consider for for uh, simplicity we'll consider the scalar scalar field okay to prove this test so phi is mu and and now I'll put what is a bounded operator is asking so bounded operators means that we have a uh, uh, finite knot so if if o is a bounded operator the it means that o psi o dagger psi this is finite okay so any bounded operators means this o is then the o is bounded operator then this is going to be finite okay. now and as also chandamuli also discussed yesterday that we consider the smear field operator for some uh, issue of message like So the f is actually the smearing function. So we'll consider this type of field, which we'll defined as phi f, and it is a par well, well defined operator because it it is it is the two point function is not, I mean, divergent or something. So now we'll consider state psi f, which is just like. now <coughs> so and the, so the point is that the is the uh, vacuum sector of hilbert space is actually constructed all all possible psi f okay now <coughs> consider an an uh, region which is okay let me this one picture so this is the like a, a region sp a space like region sigma suppose it is like t equal to 0 okay now it consider <coughs> an open set of this sigma which is which is called u okay u so this this is the this so u is defined u as different as like this is open set is different as p less than epsilon for some epsilon greater than 0 So this is just just a patch of this uh, plus minus epsilon patch of this uh, this uh, sigma equal to sigma size. Okay. So this this is called U. So sigma is a Cauchy slice and U is the open set of the, of the sigma. Hmm. Now the intuitive part is that if we consider the <coughs> uh, all the psi f and all I mean if we consider the psi f where f is supported all over the sigma, okay. Then, using this psi f, we can always construct this silver. I mean, the full vacuum sector. Is that right? I mean, because the that is that is like the I mean uh, uh, classical. I mean, in the classical, that is just like the uh, I mean initial value problem. Like right? if you if you I mean <coughs> if you set the initial value at some constant Cauchy slice, then you can know all the uh, uh, all the uh, all the dynamics from in the t time greater than zero. This is like the similar analogy still, but but the counterintuitive part is the in the Rieslinder theorem is that if this if uh, if if we construct you uh, an a, 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 uh, <coughs> a subset of the open region V, which is uh, I mean if we construct a particular this region, okay. So s suppose we will call this V, not the full U, but we construct just a particular open region V. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 
Is that fine? So if we the the contradictory part in the recenter theorem is that if you constant any if you consider only any uh, a particular open region V, which is a subset of the full U, and if V is arbitrarily small, then <coughs> uh, this So if mm, okay, sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so this is B, and the open set is basically dif uh, defined as some U B. Okay. So sigma for sigma, the open that this uh, this open set is defined as U, and for the for this region, I mean for the B region, the open set is defined as U V. Okay. So. So now the co uh, if f one f two all this f has the support only over this U V part, then. This psi a is enough to generate all the full full the full L reverse. That is the statement of Rissinger theory. Okay. So <coughs> that, that means that uh, this uh, I mean this uh, phi f is actually is f, but this f has a support of f belongs to this. So so I mean this uh, phi f if if. If we integrate over this only this region, the, this F has the support only this region, then you can construct the full Hilbert space by by this uh, phi field acting on this vacuum. Okay, so that is a statement of Rissinger. Sorry, U B. Yeah, so U U is the Open region of this uh, full sigma. Okay, sigma is the full region. Cost cost is less. U is the open. I mean, open set, which is the which defines uh, mod t minus t is minus epsilon to plus epsilon as patch. Okay, and we consider uh, a, a, a sub region of sigma is v. V is basically sigma, right? And U v is the I mean the open region of this v. Okay. This one. So. Uh, uh, Yes, phi f. So phi f. I mean, uh, we consider this f, which has support only in the U v. Hmm? So f is a smearing function. F is a function. Who, which has support only in? I'm saying that if f has the support only in this region, U v region, then it still the these operators can construct the full Hilbert space by acting on omega. Yes. I mean, all state in the in the Hilbert, Hilbert space can be constructed by this phi, the, by the algebra of this phi f, by 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 I mean some phi f one, phi f two, phi f three, or or the or the linear combination of those. Yes. You can construct all these, all the states by just doing. So that is a non-trivial part in there, because because if if f has a full support on the full suppose sigma, I mean or or full u. Then it is not a trivial. Then it is a trivial statement. It is intuitive statement. It, we know that it actually defines the full Hilbert space. But the non-trivial point is that if f has support in the U V, then it is still it is cost of the full Hilbert space. That is the counterintuitive statement in the Rissinger theorem. Uh, hi, Suchetan. Uh, I'm not understanding the hmm? figure. Sorry. The figure I'm not understanding. So the sigma is the region. Yeah, within the, the slice, right? one constant tensile, yeah. Right, and V is a uh, subset inside the open yeah. region inside. Yeah, sigma. V is, a, is one one of the open region. In the in, in, V is the one of the subset of this sigma, one of the region. I mean, one one sub one interval of this. So why is it only on the boundary of that region then? Hmm? Why is it on the boundary of? The no, region? no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it should be. I mean, any. 
So it might like that actually. So B could be you can okay. say like this. So these are I'm I'm this is like one dimensional system, but you can if you if you choose any any. So this is this is B. And this in this sigma. And yeah. what is the dotted? Uh, oh, dotted curve. is the I mean the open open set. I mean the suppose I mean if if it is in the t direction, so it is the minus epsilon to plus epsilon. So this patch, I mean the, oh. this this patch, so that this is called U. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Or in other words, uh, in the in this language, it is called that the psi f is dense in the in the uh, in the full in H zero. That. So is dense mean that uh, so the norm of this psi f minus any state in the Hilbert space is actually small, very small number. So this I'm the dense, but it is approximately close. Any state is approxim approximately close to to the state in the Hilbert space, right? There is a statement. So that means that it is dense in the full Hilbert space. <coughs> so in other words, so uh, that. If this statement is false, I mean, if Riesinger theory is false, then there could be some other some state chi in the in the in the Hilbert space, which actually annihilate this So we can, f if it is false, that then we can have some state for which it it is it is annihilated. I mean, it, the exponential value is, it is zero, right? And since it is true for all f1, f2, and fn, then this means that chi. So, if Riesinger is false, then there could be some state chi for which this is zero. Or in other words, uh, we have to show that there, there, is be, there will be no state in like chi for which it is zero. And if there is some state, then chi is itself zero. Okay. That's the so, so um, let's, I'm just. So we'll show that So, so the point is that we, we, what do we want to show that if if it is zero, I mean, the, if it is zero means there is some state chi for which uh, for which Riesinger theorem is false. But so if it is zero for this uh, x1 to x10 for for in the, in this interval or in this region, then uh, then it is zero for all x1 to x10 in the full manifold and full Minkowski space. If we if we prove this, then it is true that chi is itself zero then there is no state like this and then uh, then uh, then then it, it will prove that chi is chi is distinct in the okay. so 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 what do we want to prove is that that if there is some state chi and if it is zero then it is zero for if it is zero for x1 to x10 in the in this region in the uh, uv region then it is of also zero for all the extent to extent in the outside of the region UV. So if we prove this, then this is the proof of the distance. Okay. 
you going to prove it hmm? are you going to prove it yeah but uh, now should i want to prove or no, or i just time. so you mentioned so you mentioned the two statements hmm? in, in, so you stated that you had given two statements right so i want to see how you arrive at the second statement from this theorem so hmm. you said okay maybe you have that i mean this statement no 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 so you in the implications oh, yeah so you had two statements right hmm. what what was the second statement uh, oh, okay uh, Uh, who is second statement? Sorry, I mean I I was saying like uh, yeah one statement is the bounded operator restricted to an arbitrary open set is enough to uh, consider the full Hilbert space on the Feldman set. Yeah, and the second one. Another one is like yo know, in QFT field variables in one region is actually integral with the field variables in the other other region, which I'll uh, you'll see yeah, later yeah. that. Yeah. So how does it follow from here? Yeah, we'll follow from we'll see later that it is actually followed from this. I mean, it, it also trains that vacuum is entangled, right? And yeah, we'll see that uh, one example, which is he's saying like that if, if you consider a moon and uh, something. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, should I continue or I? I don't know. I'm Fifteen minutes. I mean, if you want to do it now, you can have fifteen minutes. Okay. Can, uh, okay, I'll try to uh, prove this uh, in fifteen minutes. Then. So we we want to prove this statement, right? So uh, so all all of the above I'm following from the the Witten's lecture on this. I'll show the reference um, later. But hmm. so let let's define first phi and put the quantity phi is one. So we want to show that this quantity, if if this is uh, if uh, if this is zero for for x one, then it 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 will also vanishes. It will also mm. you raise the font size. Outside this region, right? So Chetan. So so Chetan. Oh, see you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So let's start by doing some uh, time-like shift of this. So let's take one point. Like, let's take one point x n. So let's take we we want to shift x n to a, some a time-like shift x n to x n plus u t. Okay. <coughs> For some real u, and t is a time-like vector. <coughs> so we'll define g u, is basically.
So now this, uh, I just, we can uh, write it as some equivalent i h. And now, as I said that uh, this omega is Poincare invariant, so H acting on omega is 0, right? So this acting on omega is uh, 0, I mean 1. So, <coughs> so this means it's Now, <coughs> we consider the complex U plane. Okay, let, let us consider the complex U plane. So, in the complex U plane, you can see that uh, for, I mean, uh, for U, <coughs> for uh, imaginary U, this imaginary U, for imaginary U greater than zero, this, this is actually holomorphic, right? This, this part. Because you will see that this is minus, if you, you real plus I imagine you, then it is minus H U, and, and of course H is uh, bounded by below. So, <coughs> so this means that this is holomorphic in the upper half plane of the U, right? G U. So, what is G U? Is So uh, next thing is that that <coughs> that w w we we already know that this 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 thing is zero, right? I mean, if u equal to zero, this this thing is zero. If u equal to zero, this thing is zero by definition. Also, <coughs> for u belongs to minus epsilon to plus epsilon. Uh, For very small u, I mean for very small u, for minus, then also g of u is zero. I mean, for, I mean, um, what I'm saying, like for which x plus u t So for a small, for a very small region of u, for which. Uh, this x n plus u t is still in the open region. I mean, in this region, I mean minus, minus epsilon to minus epsilon. Sorry, minus epsilon to plus epsilon. Then also e, g of u is zero. It, it is it is a given condition by the fact this, this is zero. So g so so we have two two ways that g is holomorphic in the upper plane in u and and g is also zero in a, in the for for u for the interval of u minus epsilon to plus epsilon. And and G is also continuous in the in the real, real U line. So there is an uh, AM. Uh, um, um, so it's a switch. So in complex analysis, there was a switch reflection principle, uh, which which states that if if a if a function is holomorphic in the upper half plane, and it is continuous in the real line. Then it can be analytically continued with the lower half plane. So I mean, it is also it is analytic in the full full complex plane. Okay. So this means that since G is also holomorphic in the upper half plane, and G is and G is also continuous in the real line. So this from this first reflection principle, we can get the G is analytic or uh, holomorphic in full full complex plane of U. Okay. Now the point is that G is analytic in the full complex plane, and also the fact that plus G is zero for U minus epsilon to plus epsilon. So if you now if we uh, Taylor expand G U in uh, I mean around the point epsilon minus epsilon to plus epsilon, then so we'll and we'll get that all uh, it will get from anywhere in the G in the U plane. 
by less spending GU around, around if balance is to S1, and we'll get that GU is zero. So these two fact means that GU is always zero. Okay, just that, just an analytic property. Only. So, so the point is that this function, when when we shift one point, xn to x, xn plus u t and in the time lag direction, for which xn this this does not belong to this u v, then we get this g u is zero. Okay. So the next point is that like uh, you can we can take different different time lag vector like. Uh, If you can take, uh, if you take a different time lag vector like x n, if you x n prime is x n plus u t, and you, you take a different time lag vector x n double prime is x n prime plus v t prime, and I mean you you take another shift in the another time lag direction, then you can still in the same way you can still argue that g is zero in the same property. So. We, we now prove that if one point of the uh, one point in the full in the la last point the xn if we shift the xn into a time lag direction then this uh, this con this uh, this this thing is still zero so the next part of the proof is like that if you take the, the if you shift this xn to xn plus u2 and xn minus 1 to xn minus 1 plus ut so then like uh, if you shift xn to in a in a time lag uh, in a time lag direction like uh, is it very clear that it's still zero? Like, couldn't it change the ordering or something? Like, um, for which? Or like, say, say if like if you shift x n in the time lag direction and it happens to cross the x n minus one or something, is there yeah, no yeah, subtlety yeah. at all? Like, or no, uh, no. Why? Why the order is changed? You usually expect uh, like a uh, singularities when you change orderings, right? In these correlators. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe maybe I should ask. Like, is f this phi x one to x n? Is it a are they all like correlators of particular ordering, or they or they involve all kind of orderings of this uh, oh phi no, insertions? Uh, I mean, uh, at this point, there is no ordering. I mean, it is for arbitrary ordering. It's true for arbitrary. Ordering. Now we, we'll, I mean, what um, uh, say? So suppose these are all the x one to x n are space like of so space like separate. Suppose okay. Then I move one one point to time like direction. Then you can say that there is some ordering different, but that does not. I mean, in the proof, it does not matter, like uh, which order I take or something. Uh, sorry, all the xi's are on a time slice or not? Or a, or a sigma slice. They are not on a time slice. They are on a epsilon window of a time minus, slice. Minus epsilon to okay. epsilon on this slice. So I mean that also involves all kind of orderings. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So now next step is like uh, yeah what I'm saying that <coughs> so x n minus one and x n you can change it like and we can again we can argue that for this two shift I mean if we shift x n and x n minus one then again we can argue that this for this two shift will will uh, this g is zero I mean g of omega is zero. So in this way, you can we can you will, now you can argue that up to this x one, if we shift x n x n minus one, x n minus two, and up to this x one, if we shift all these points, then we can we can still have that g of I mean this this function is zero. Okay. So this this completes the proof that at least in the time lag direction, or if you move this x n to x n plus u t in time lag direction, or uh, some then uh, then it is still vanishes for uh, which is outside the u v. I mean, outside this open region. Leash leader on lattice. Yeah. Is there a leash, leash leader also on lattice? Matter. Lattice. Lattice. No, no, no. There's no lattice. There's purely on cubed. On a cubed time. 
is not logical. Okay. Okay. We'll st I'll stop there, and and there will be many things to discuss. But we'll see that if we can get time and. No, you. If you want to decide, please. Yeah, I, I can go on, but before that. No, but should I continue now or I? No, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. No, but this, this is true for any operator. This is for any gauge operator in any, any field. Ah, no, no. What I'm saying is that if I have a OA, OB, let's say, okay. uh, would it be that for each AB it has to be less than infinite or there's some trace or something that could be less than infinite? Oh, uh, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, it's naturally. That's OA, OB, and the dagger of. Usually, usually, yeah. I don't think it's. But this is true for I'm I'm but yeah but I use this fact because for the scalar field I I prove this for scalar field. Yeah. <coughs>